is not a particularly healthy thing. It sort of ends up with these, you know, glass ceilings and these grand conferences where Hillary Clinton or um, um, Mika Brzezinski and um, others are empowering, you know, this empowering thing. So I think feminism from the beginning um, was really embedded in imperialism. I, you know, I, I wasn't unusual being a Marxist anti-imperialist going into the women's liberation movement. That's who we were. These are mostly people, women, young women who had uh, been in Mississippi and worked with the, uh, with SNCC, which was very anti-imperialist. And they brought all that knowledge with them to the women's liberation movement. But that really got cut off, um, you know, by the Miss Magazine, Gloria Steinem, and all in the, in the 70s, so that uh, feminism as such went in uh, directions that I don't think were very, uh, you know, were in some ways retrograde. So I think we're getting, I do think though, and I, I'm really happy that 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 anti-imperialism that was set at the time had a thread that continued and is just enormous now. So I think, um, I think feminism is being reclaimed and retooled. I think it's being uh, by a new generation. Uh, I, it was really great to be at NWSA and hear people talking about abolitionist feminism, which is really important in an age when carceral feminism is one of the ways in which the drive towards change is being undermined by uh, using, you know, so pseudo feminism to actually build up the prison industrial complex in the name of um, so called justice and revenge. Um, so I think um, it is being reclaimed and I think we all have a responsibility to be part of making that uh, happen. Thank you. I'm not going to go, I agree, but I think also for, uh, at least in the Palestinian context, there is the, there is Islamophobia is operating as well as colonial feminism. And, it's, uh, and, and it also operates in other Muslim, Arab, and, and uh, contexts in which, on one hand, you have Western powers claiming to save us, to save feminists and queers, right? And uh, basically condemn the others who are not feminists, and, who are not women and queer, okay? And so the men end up being also sort of like justification for the murder of men, right? And then on the other hand, you have a big movement that talks about the liberation of women that sometimes feel very uncomfortable as about the label itself feminism. So there isn't a word in Arabic that is the same as feminism. But it, when you ask people, what do you think about feminism? There is a whole lot of discussion before people even agree. Then they say, I'm not going to talk about it. I want to talk about women's liberation. And that's the understanding of women liberation in context, that it's part of people's liberation, that is part of the whole justice question. Not that it's separated only about what I usually call vagina ink, because I think it's very, very, I mean, it's very problematic. Because it only talks about a very, very narrow aspect of it. Very part of, one aspect of our anatomy and who we are. But it doesn't talk about the rest of our lives, who we are. And there is always the question like, why do women participate in liberation movements? And the questions are, why shouldn't they? Aren't they Palestinians? Are they being oppressed? Are they being, you know, so this is, there is the question, and then there is the other questions like, oh, women are going to be sent back to the kitchen. And there is the, the, the whole com, com, complete negation of the fact that people have their own agency and participate and think about it and so on. And it's much more complicated. So a lot of the times we don't even want to enter that conversation because it is not similar to the kind of conversation we were having at NWSA. There is a very, very different, very different big distance between people who are actually doing the politics of liberation day in and day out and actually engaging in it really means their lives. It does not mean only something that's being written 
once upon a time or some, but it's actually real and contextual. And the words in which they are being thrown at us, exactly like uh, Roxanne and, and Diana said. So I think that that's the kind of politics that I belong to, and I think my comrades, sisters here, and I guess a lot of people in the WSA. I mean, I would just add that I think there's, you know, it's amazing to see the breadth and, and depth of women's and feminist organizing and gender-oriented organizing today, but it's also notable that there's a real lack of internationalism. Like, the absence of, Jennifer and I were talking about this, just, you know, we have more information than ever about more countries than ever, and yet there are, seem to be fewer connections in some ways. And, and just a, a grabbing on to the overarching importance of imperialism, and not only US imperialism, although certainly US imperialism being important. Um, I mean, the only other thing I wanna say is that, you know, one of the reasons that I'm so happy to be part of this panel and to see panels like this is that there's a, a dehistoricization that's taken place, a loss of a lot of this history so that, you know, people are learning in women's studies classes that feminism was only bourgeois, you know, middle class women's feminism, white women's feminism, when there were all these feminisms and really incredibly rich and powerful movements. I mean, I look at some of the International Women's Day, you know, I have a little footage of some of the International Women's Day marches that Women Against Imperialism organized, and there were thousands of women on these marches. And I look and go, where are all these women? <laughs> like, whatever happened to this movement? And I, that's the last thing I want to say is that I feel like, you know, that movement got repressed. I mean, everybody knows about COINTELPRO in terms of the black movement and the Native American movement, but people don't understand that there was also COINTELPRO that killed the women's movement, that it wasn't all our own fault. It wasn't just because white women you know, and middle-class women did this. Yes, but those were also, you know, there was also an intentionality around what happened and it took a different form. You know, it was about ridicule, it was about um, shaming, it was about dividing, it was about making women doubt each other, but at the same time, it had the same impact. Um, just real quick, I think it's important to ask the question when people say what is, like, what is feminism? I think everyone has a different um, interpretation of what does it mean to be a feminist, oftentimes, other people ask me, are you a feminist? And I was like, I'm a revolutionary, right? I, I am fighting for our people's, you know, um, national liberation movement in terms of genuine democracy. And I think that it really is specifically thinking about a class analysis. That's why the appreciation of the anti-imperialist feminism really isn't just talking about women being free. It is all marginalized and oppressed people and everyone in this room, right? So until we overthrow imperialism, we won't see really the, the liberation of all women, trans, and gender nonconforming people.